Good morning students. Today we are discussing chapter 35, the artist of the Gothic period from history of Western art. In this chapter of first module, we shall talk about the major artist of the Gothic period. As you know, Gothic period was a very long period spread across countries of European continent. The number of artists therefore shall be also a huge one. We have listed many of them in our content attachment of the site. However, we shall now learn only about the following major artists of the Gothic period. Zimbabwe, 1240 to 1302. Ducio, 1255 to 1319. Pietro Lorenzetti, 1280 to 1348. Ambrugio Lorenzetti, 1319 to 1348. Giotto, 1267 to 1337. And Simone Martini, 1285 to 1344. The objective of today's discussion is to understand and appreciate the role of individual artists and their contribution to Gothic period. Also, we should appreciate an artwork from artist's point of view. Let us first look at Simabue. He belonged to Italy. He was the last great Italian artist in the Byzantine style who had dominated early medieval painting in Italy. Following are some of major works of Simabue to understand how the artist was evolving his style. Fresco of New Testament scenes in the upper church of St. Francisco, Assisi. Madonna enthroned with St. Francis. Mesta the Santa Trinita Madonna. Mesta was painted around 1280 for the main altar of church of Santa Trinita in Fringe and is housed in Love Museum of Paris, France. Mesta means majesty. The Virgin Mary sitting on a throne with Jesus on her leg. Simabue's Moderna still shows the main traits of Byzantine style, a profusion of gold and an almost total absence of volume perspective. You might want to compare this one with those painted by Ducio and Giotto as a separate exercise. How precious, elaborated and refined is the throne where Virgin Mary is delicately sitting. Simabue's style provides the firm foundation upon which rested the art of Giotto and Ducio in the 14th century. Although he was superseded in his own lifetime by these artists, both of whom he had influenced and perhaps trained. It is remarkable to note that Simabue's great contemporary Dante put him at the forefront of Italian painters and Giorgino Vasari also started writing his biography with the life of Simabue. Vasari, in his lives of most eminent Indian painters, sculptors and architects, in 1550 begins his collection of biographies with the life of Simabue. His, the art historiographers from the 14th century to the present have recognized the art and career of Simabue as the dividing line between the old and the new pictorial traditions in the Western European art. Simabue seems to have been among the first to return to a close observation of nature. Let us look at the picture four, the four evangelists painted between 1272 and 1302. The four evangelists in the vault of the crossing of the upper church of Assisi which is sculpturally conceived, but its solidity and bulk are heightened by a crystalline city view that accompany each of the figures. The view of Rome that accompanies St. Mark, for example, is not only one of the earliest recognizable views of the city, but is also one of the first in which the buildings seem solid and separated one from the other by a clearly defined space. 
the concern with the illusion of space and with a three-dimensional form occupying the space is a rarely met within the medieval painting prior to Shimabue. But it is highly characteristic of Shimabue's leading student and rival Giotto. Finally, he brought to Italian painting a new awareness of space and of sculptural form. By his own personality and by his contribution to painting, he merits Vasari's characterization of him and the first painter of the modern times. Let us now turn to Dissio. His dates are 1255 to 1260. He was born in Siena, Tuscany. He influenced Simone Martini and the brothers Ambrogio and Pietro Lorenzetti, among others. The technique and subject of Dussio. Dussio mostly worked with the pigment and a tempera and painted religious subject matters. In Dussio's art and formality of the italo byzantine tradition, strengthened by a clear understanding of its evolution from classical roots, is fused with the new spirituality of Gothic style. Here we see one of Ducio's famous painting, picture seven, Madonna Enthroned, 1308 to 1311, is painted in tempera and gold on a panel. Madonna Enthroned, the altarpiece of main altar of the Cathedral of Siena, began to change the Byzantine art style. The linear angular quality of the draperies became softer, revealing the figure underneath. Faces, hands and bodies became more rounded in a three-dimensional treatment of space is little more evident. There even seems to be a show of tender expression towards the child Christ. He owes his greatest fame to this painting. In this painting, picture of Annunciation of the Death of Virgin, the figures are no longer static or flat, but have volume effect with facial expressions. His figures are solidly grounded in space, showing movements and gestures. The clothing is realistically hung on the figures showing the, showing the form of the body. Although he has made a great stride putting figures inside an architectural setting, and has created some depth of space. Influenced by Gothic sculpture frameworks, putting figures inside compartments. Yet, he has not mastered the size of relationship of the interior rooms with the size of figures. Now is the turn of Pietro Lorenzetti, and he was born in 1280 and died in 1348. One of the early members of the Sienese School of Painting, Lorenzetti, along with his younger brother Ambrogio, introduced naturalism into Sienese art in their artistry and experiments with three-dimensional and spatial arrangements. The brothers foreshadowed the art of Renaissance. Let us now see picture number nine, the details of the fresco of Basilica of St. Francisco the Assisi, 1330 to 1340. This masterwork is a fresco decoration of the lower church of Basilica of St. Francisco the Assisi, where he painted a series of 17 large scenes depicting crucifixion, deposition from the cross, and entombment. The mass figures in these pieces display emotional interactions. Unlike many prior depictions, which appear to be iconic agglomerations, as if independent figures had been glued on to a surface with no compelling relationship to one another. The narrative influence of Giotto's frescoes in the Bardi and Ferrugi chapels in Santa Croce, Florence, and the Arena Chapel, Padua, can be seen in these and other works of the Lower Church by the Lorenzetti brothers and their contemporary competitor from Florence, Giotto. But also his followers, Bernardo Dadi and Masco da Banco, seeded the Italian pictorial revolution that extracted figures 
from gilded either of Byzantine iconography into pictorial worlds of the towns, land and air. Sienese iconography generally more mystical and fantastic than that of more naturalistic Florentines, sometimes resemble a modern surrealist landscape. Let us see now Last Supper of SEC frescoes, painted in 1330 to 1340. Perhaps Lorenzetti's most ambitious work is the Passion Fresco Cycle in the left transient of the Lower Church of San Francisco in Assisi. These 17 well-preserved frescoes, the high point of his early career, show the influence of Giotto's monumentality. The impulse of Pisano, 13th century expressionism, and the teaching of Now see picture number 11, Birth of Virgin, Triptych by Pietro Lorenzetti. Birth of Virgin was the third painting in a series completed for Sienese Cathedral. Beginning with Ducio's Mesta, including Simano Martini's Annunciation. The use of spatial illusion, vertical columns and bed frame running parallel to the picture. Vaulted ceilings adds dimension to the rooms. Depth is further generated in the left panel of the triptych. As the viewer peers outside, the waiting room to see nearby building. Ducio, Simone, and Lorenzetti were all members of Siani's school. In contrast to Ducio's regal depiction of Virgin in the Miesta, Simone's Annunciation with a scene that appears supernatural. The birth of the Virgin is notable for Lorenzetti's representation of the Virgin in corporeal setting. In this scene, a bath is being poured on a virgin. Midwives attend St. Annie, who lounges on a plaid blanket, who lounges on a plaid blanket covered bed, and an expectant father awaits news of the birth. The figures are modeled and solid. Although the holy persons are signified with crowns of light, they appear otherwise terrestrial. If not for their crown of light and St. Annie's unnaturally large body, this painting could be interpreted as a genre painting depicting the everyday lives of the ordinary people. If one compares this intimate household scene adorned with richly colored textiles to the gold ground work that creates an otherworldly effect in Simone's Annunciation. One quickly notices that Lorenzetti has created a more accessible virgin. Perhaps one of the most extraordinary qualities of the birth of the virgin is his use of spatial illusion. He creates a seamless architectural world with the integration of the frame and picture plane. The vertical columns and the bed frame running parallel to the picture plan creates a planar composition. In addition, Pietro's rendering of the vaulted ceiling adds dimension to the rooms and closes this intimate scene. Depth is further generated in the left panel of the triptych. As the viewer peers outside the waiting room to see a nearby building, as Hyman affirms, birth of the Virgin reads both as triptych, as a deep and unified space, the most convincing interior space of the entire 14th century. Let us now look at Giotto, 1267 to 1337. He was an Italian painter and architect from Florentine. In the late Middle Ages, he generally considered the first in the line of great artists who contributed to the Italian Renaissance. Here we see magnified life statue of Giotto outside the Uffizi. Giotto may very well have been the first painter succeeding in creating unified compositions. There is unity between the figures and their surroundings. And unity among the figures interacting as they do through gesture and emotion. 
Let us look at the painting of the Scrovegni Chapel in Padua, the Arena Chapel. Giotto imbued his figures with personality, tried to give expression to their faces and bearing. As is clearly visible from his major work, the frescoes in the Scrovegni Chapel in Padua. Now we see picture 14. Scenes from the life of Christ, Lamentation, the morning of Christ, painted between 1304 to 1306. Giotto chose to paint his subjects, the overwhelming majority of which were religious figures, in a solid and classicizing way, reminiscent of Arnolfo the Cambio. Indeed, his masterpiece, the Scrubigny Chapel, is evidence of as much. They are solidly three-dimensional, have faces and gestures that are based on close observation and are clothed not in swirling formalized drapery but in garments that hang naturally and have both form and weight. He also took bold steps in foreshortening and with having character face inwards with their backs towards the observer creating the illusion of space. The figures occupy compressed settings with naturalistic elements, often using forced perspective devices so that they resemble stage sets. This similarity is increased by Giotto's careful arrangement of figures in such a way that the viewer appears to have particular place and even an involvement in many of the scenes. As Giotto grew older, his subjects remained consistently religious in nature, but his style continued to mature. Towards the end of his life, he was commissioned to paint the Santa Croce chapels, became especially renowned during Renaissance times for Giotto's ingenuous use of chiaroscuro and his masterful manipulation of perspective. Now we discuss the art of Simone Martini, 1285 to 1344, who was an important member of traditional Siena school of painting. According to Giorgio Vasari, in his Lives of the Artists, Martini had been a pupil of Giotto, but experts now think he was apprenticed with Dussieu in 1255 to 1319 from whom he absorbed the technique of harmonizing color. He is specially noted for his presento experiments in using time for decorative purposes to such an extent that his mature works are almost abstract compositions. After being interested with the Mesta for Siena's town hall in 1315, Martini divided his time between the French kingdom of Naples Pisa, Orvieto, Siena, Florence, and the papal court of Avigno. Martini's masterpieces also include Mesta, 1315, Plazo Publico Siena, fresco painting in chapel of St. Martin, Assisi, Gaidorcio Fogliano, fresco, 1328, the Annunciation altarpiece, 1300. He was also noted for his style of medieval manuscripts, illuminated. He collaborated on a number of Gothic illuminated manuscripts, becoming highly influential in his field. He is considered to be a highly important contributor to pre renaissance painting 1300 to 1400 of the Euro. Let us now look at picture 15, Martini's painting the Annunciation with St. Margaret and St. Ansanas with his brother-in-law Lippo Memi. It is wooden triptych painted in tempera and gold with a central panel of double size. He is considered as Martini's masterwork, one of the most outstanding works of Gothic painting. The work was originally painted for a side altar in Siena Cathedral. The Annunciation shows the Archangel Gabriel entering the house of the Virgin Mary to communicate her that she will soon bear a child. 
Jesus whose name means the savior Gabriel holds an olive branch in his hand a traditional symbol of peace while pointing at the holy ghost draw with the other the dove is descending from heaven from center of medrola of eight angels above about the enter the virgin's right ear the virgin sitting of the throne is portrayed at the moment that she is startled out of reading reacting with the graceful and composed reluctance looking surprised at the celestial messenger also her dress has an arabesque like pattern at the sides the two petal scent of the cathedral are separated by central scene of two decorated twisting columns the background completely gilt as a vase of lilies an allegory of purity often associated to the virgin mary the use of a gothic line plus such realistic elements as the book the vase the throne the pavement in perspective the realistic action of two figures and their subtle nuances of character are a substantial detachment from the bidimensionality typical of Byzantine art well that is so much for the artist of gothic period in this module i have tried to cover the major artists and attempted to understand some of their artworks there is lot more art that has been done by these artists that can and must be learned i hope that i have inspired you enough to look into these works of art please go through the bibliography and artworks and look at the questions and try answering them we look forward to more interactions and i'll see you in the next module thank you